Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're all doing well. Today I am going to be reading out something I wrote inspired by one of my most favorite travel experiences. It's a memory that breathes in me like some kind of a flower that is in <laughs> eternal blooming. I mean, not everything about that experience is romantic and I usually say this in the context of being in the Himalaya, but it is as haunting as it is beautiful. So without much further ado, I'm just going to read it. And I call this piece, Aase Tu Himachala Paryantam. 12th August 2018, S and I arrive in Aruchulamunai after seeing Madurai and Rameshwaram. Dhanushkodi is yet to happen to us on our way back. Dhanushkodi is yet to haunt us. To our right is the Arabian Sea, restless and anguished, roaring. To our left is the Bay of Bengal, somewhat calm and contained, listening. We get off the rickety bus we had boarded in Rameshwaram and finally see the two oceanic bodies meet, the bay and the sea have now just become water. There is no plurality now, and above this singular spectacle, the sky is cloudless, a barren blue. An old lady here reminds us of our own grandmothers. She asks us to buy some conch shells from her. We squat down like children in front of the seashells, freshly separated from the sea, reeking a pungent, briny smell in remembrance. But Ajji says, Kadalo sai ke kudu, and she holds the conch close to my friend's ear and they both smile. The shell is now singing of the sea in my ear. Ajji is right. We can hear the melody of the sea. It is this old soul with her toothless smile who brings poetry to us even before we have begun to comprehend what we are beholding. Kadalo sai ke kudu. You can hear the sea. This coastal dweller, this knower of the sea, also knows beauty. But in her not knowing that she knows, the world's indifference has become innocence. We buy the shells, almost all of them. We begin our walk to there, where the world is all water, all blue, an assured blue. The land tapers into a narrow stretch of sand behind us. We stand in water, knee deep. The shimmering expanse is unnerving. So is the wailing wind conspiring against our sanity, taunting it like it weren't unsure enough already. On the other side is Sri Lanka, says my friend, her voice a deep nostalgic blue, for Sri Lanka has so much of her heart that healed there two years ago. I wander away from the crowd until I lose sight of human forms. I remember what Swami Dayananda Saraswati writes in his book, Vedic View and Way of Life. I quote him now. In the Himalayas, there are people in small villages on the slopes which have been tiered for cultivation. Sadhus who go there from Hyderabad will introduce themselves as being from Rameshwaram because that is the only distant place they know. Or they will say they are from Setu. It is the reason why in our traditional parlance there is an expression a Setu Himachala Paryantam, extending from Setu up to the Himalaya. In that expression, you have covered the entire Bharat. Two years ago, I was standing before the Himalayan mountains with the same awe and joy swelling in me to the point of pain. These are places where the world's silence penetrates yours tenderly. In those depths of you, to which you thought only grief reached. This exquisite experience, soft blue, snow blue, 
Not only the waves, but even light falters here, wavers on water. Somehow, looking at it, I forgive myself for my impulses, including one that made me call this world indifferent only a few minutes ago. This is how great the world is in its mercies that sometimes come to us unsought. Such a blessing we have inherited. It is great and unabashed and uncontainable. How small these eyes are and just how much the world allows me to consume all of its beauty. And when I close my eyes, enraptured, how it enables me to remember everything without even seeing it. Aruchilamunai, what a glorious error this love I have for you that upsets reason. I wouldn't have it any other way. You have granted me the celestial gift of trust, this audacious trust. One cannot escape time, but you have helped us suspend it. And I believe everything I am feeling now. Aruchulamunai, laugh at me all you want, but don't we all believe without knowing, without understanding, at least sometimes? Isn't that what some of us call God? So yeah, Aruchula Munai means so much to me. Um, this was a rather tough phase in my life and uh, <laughs> just reading this and remembering the place, you know, that morning when we stood there quietly uh, makes me very emotional even today. And it's an experience that will continue to breathe in me just as intensely as I first felt it. Thank you very much for patiently listening or watching. Uh, I will come back soon with another video. Take care. Have a great time.